Morning, morning. As I said before, we have a whole lot of fruit out there, so if anybody's not taking any interest in me, go eat fruit, but otherwise, um, right, let me get this going. As you all um, you'll recognize from my voice, I'm not from New York. I'm actually from Georgia, so hello you all. <laughs> It's rather warm down there at the moment, so. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna cover perimeter induction unit replacements. Thank you to ComEd for partnering on this presentation. Um, John kind of stole a lot of my thunder about what you're about to see, but I'll go through it anyway, and I'll try and do it as quickly as possible. Um, I'm VP of s &M, that's sales and marketing, for those that don't know what s &M is. Um, and we're represented in New York by Gilbar Industries, they're our engineering rep that covers the design engineer, the sheet metal and the mechanical contractor. And obviously our friends at ACES that are covering the owner and the developer and the, and the building engineer. I'm going to start off with a very short quirky video. It's our 2 minute 30 second elevator pitch on what a replacement induction unit is. It's on our website so what I would say is anybody that wants that little reminder, please go there and you'll find it. And then we'll just go through what some of those arguments are. Isn't this a handsome building? Killer location, magnificent view, and great tenants. But there's a problem. The perimeter induction system in this baby was installed way back when the Beatles invaded America, and typewriters were cutting edge. Nowadays, it's struggling to keep up with modern loads and demands. Plus, it's noisy and inefficient with utility and maintenance bills going through the roof. This has Albert, the building owner, uptight. His anchor tenants are asking for a greener, quieter workplace, or he faces losing them. He needs to deliver, big time. Now just relax, Albert, it's going to be okay, thanks to an amazingly efficient plug-and-play replacement solution from Dedanko. It's easy to install, whisper quiet, and affordable. See, these highly engineered units from Dedenko require a lot less fan speed and pressure to deliver the same amount of heating and cooling. That means higher efficiency and significantly reduced noise. All of this has Albert very excited, so he decides to invest in a full Dedenko retrofit. Wow, I didn't know you could dance, Albert. The retrofit is a breeze because Dedenko replacement units work with the existing enclosures and pipes. This dramatically speeds up the job, and it means very little disruption for Albert's beloved tenants. Once the new Dedenko system is whispering along, the building is a quieter, more comfortable place to work. Albert's big-time tenants renew their leases, and his utility bills drop. Go ahead, Albert. Keep dancing if you want. Hmm. Okay, that's an interesting move. Discover the Dedenko difference at Dedenko.com. And it's that easy. And really, I suppose what we're talking about is you're the owner of this wonderful 1970s muscle car and it's got this big V8 in it and it just doesn't go very fast. And we now have the ability to swap out that engine and that, that transmission. You keep the same car and we can make it very efficient and go very very fast and we all like well I like fast cars anyway so just going back to the technology so our claim to fame if you like is our induction nozzle the company started in the mid 90s really um, based on the fact that um, the, the inventor of the nozzle, who was our president, was studying at university. He went to a lot of lecture halls like this and sadly they got an induction unit system in there that over time wasn't very efficient. It was throwing all this black gunk out the top. The coils had become fairly blocked. To get the loads up they put more and more air through and the noise level gone up to the point where they were about NC55 in the space. So. Uh, Vlad's lecturer gave him the task of coming up with a way of reducing the noise that's generated from an induction nozzle. 
and he came up with this clover leaf shaped nozzle. Um, they manufactured about 400. Him and his mates got blind drunk one Friday night, broke into the building, swapped out all the nozzles, forgot about it. Everybody turned the system on Monday morning, couldn't hear anything and thought it wasn't working. So they realized they'd actually got a solution. And really the idea behind the nozzle is to increase the amount of air that is induced into the jet. So for a given amount of air that you push through it, by increasing the surface area, you pull more air into that airstream. We're comparing that really with a conventional hole or what you typically see in a, an old perimeter induction unit, a series of holes, two, threes or fours, all pushing air out at, at high velocity. And he found that if he focused the jet, so it's not just shaped on the outside, but shaped on the inside, they cut down what they call the, the, the potential core zone. The potential core zone, sadly, is a little purple area. I say sadly because it's not that well shown in the, in the picture, but the purple area that's coming out of the jet there and there is what generates noise. From a circular hole, it's typically six times diameters. We managed to get it down to one. The net result of that, it's about 10 dB quieter than a conventional jet. I'll go on here, yeah. okay. So, the net result is we have a range of perimeter induction units that we can retrofit into your building on a like-for-like -like basis where we can make some significant savings. So, this is a project we're currently working on. There's the nice old um, induction unit with the cover removed. Just to give you some ideas of what it's going, it was actually designed at 75 CFM at two and a half inches static. It had an induction rate of two to one at best. John said three to one. We're actually finding most of these are running at about one and a half to one. So for 75 CFM of outside air, conditioned outside air that you, you push into the unit, you pull another 150 across the coil. And the net result is 225 CFM is coming back into the space. So with the newer units, I like shiny new units, so there you go. We're able to drop that 75 CFM to 50 CFM, which is a 33% saving on this particular job. We dropped the static on that air from two and a half inches to one inch, so all the noise disappeared. We actually added an induction rate of four to one and we can go higher. And so the net result is we had 250 CFM of air going back into the space. We had more air going across the coil, so we had a much higher heat exchange on the water. And if you know anything about energy, you use far less energy to pump water around a system than you do to blow air around a system. So there were some significant savings, and again, John will go through those. However, the other thing to be aware is of the induction unit, not all the enclosures are the same. Okay? Some have significant effects on the PIU performance, as John was saying this morning. The, the PIU, the mechanical system, that's all designed by an engineer. The cabinet, the enclosure, is designed by an interior architect. And unfortunately, 30 or 40 years ago, those two people never talked. So they're not all the same. We see so many variations. And what I would say is you can lose another 10% of your performance through a badly designed uh, cabinet. And in fact, again, we looked at one job, John, where it was more like 25% reduction. So you've got this initial system that was designed 40 years ago to do 10,000 BTUs. The reality was now it's only doing 8,000. When you then put the cabinet on top, it's probably only doing 7,000. And you're using a lot of energy. And the way you're trying to make up that drop in energy is to ram more and more air through these things and leave them running longer and longer. This is a project we did at 280. Um, there can be some nice changes in terms of that cabinet design as well. So that was the original cabinet. We then did some custom designs for it and the net result was it went over to being something like this. Okay, so here are just some of the primary motives of why you might go for this sort of opportunity. The last one I'm not gonna go through, we're gonna make the presentation available. It's actually a a project we did in Chicago with five and a half thousand units. I'll quickly just go through what the summary was. But the first one, which is nearly in the same case for everybody, how do we reduce the energy consumed on the building? So this was their existing system. And these are real jobs. 
central chiller air handler, 50,000 CFM of primary air at six and a half static at the, at the fan, two and a half inches at the duct. Um, we then looked at the existing unit and our unit. So the existing unit in this case had 100 CFM of primary air, two and a half inches of static, and it gave that output. We were able to reconfigure that to 75 CFM at 1.1 inches of static and achieve a slightly higher output. The net result, if you do some of the maths, was a $2, $22 per square foot saving per year just by swapping out the units. Obviously, slowing down the fan, putting some variable speak, uh, frequency drives on. Second case can be increased cooling capacity. So as, as the video said, um, a lot of these were installed when the Beatles were quite fashionable and therefore loads have gone up. We pack more people in the same space. They've all got laptops and printers and all sorts of things that are producing heat. So in this case, we took an existing job, looked at the original condition which was designed at 450 tons. They're currently needed, needed 675 tons. And therefore, this was their existing system with some train PIUs. And again, we now run the newer unit at the same C, uh, CFM, so 80 in each. We were still able to reduce the static. And the net result was we were able to increase the capacity from 3,500 BTUs to 5,700. Again, we've got a 60% increase in capacity without changing, in this case, the primary air value. <coughs> and what we are seeing on a lot of jobs is a variation between the two. Most people want to reduce the airflow, but they also want a slight, slight raising capacity or that ability to have a raising capacity. So this one was just to reduce noise. Um, and the net result was just putting a new unit in. Performance actually went up. We dropped the static and we knocked about 5 dB across the noise. What I would also say, and you're going to see that later, is that it isn't just a matter of changing this. You also need to look at the controls. A lot of these 40-year-old control systems hardly work or no longer work in a lot of cases. They're just sitting there wide open. So again, that's going to give you uh, an instant ability to save energy. And finally, just to gain floor space, and we're only just going to really touch on this, we get involved in some TI work, and some of it here is in New York, where the owner just wants to lift the kit off the floor and put it into the ceiling. He wants to clean up the facade, go for a full height glazing. Um, if we take our unit, which is actually an upflow unit, and we reverse it, we can actually then make it into a downflow unit. So it's, it's relatively easy to break back into the duct most of these are fed by a vertical duct in a, in a column. Break into the duct above the suspended ceiling and take the unit off the floor and put it into the ceiling. And we're seeing that in a few cases. What I would say is that's a major overhaul for you guys. So unless you really, really want to get these off the floor, I would recommend just swapping out the unit. In that case, you're almost throwing the whole car away as opposed to just swapping out the engine. But... Um, we can actually remove them off the floor and give you a very similar performance when they go to high level. It's what we call our 30 and 35. They just replace the traditional um, low level units. Net result is it's something that sits above the ceiling cavity. It's doing the same thing. It's taking air in through the heat exchanger. In this case, it's blowing air downwards and then through a diffuser. Net result, you end up looking like something like this, which is fairly neat. As I say, it cleans up the facade. Both of those were originally low-level induction units. Here's another one that, um, in fact, there's two jobs, one on the Avenue of Americas and the other one on Park Avenue where they're doing the same thing. So there is that ability to clean them up and go up there. Finally, just the case study. This was a project in Chicago that we did about four years ago. I'm not going to go through all the notes on it, but the net result was... They wanted to undertake the, 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 the renovation while the building was occupied. It was very important to them. Um, and therefore, we really had to provide a plug-and-play unit. We had to have the ability for people to be able to go in, break into the existing cabinets, pull out the units, put the new ones in, and, and put the cabinets back in. Um, their targets were to reduce the primary airflow by 30%, reduce the static down by one inch. We were able to increase the chill water temperature because the efficiencies of the coil, so less energy was going into the chiller, 
to re-chill that water. Obviously reduce the noise level and match with the existing. They got the swap out to about 14 minutes a unit in the end. So uh, we were very, very quick. Um, there was a lot of energy that went, a lot of engineering that went into it up front, surveying the job, making sure all the fittings, and in fact, one of the fittings on the unit that we had to supply hadn't been made in 30 years, and we actually had to get those fittings specially made for this job. But the net result was job was completed. We were able to reduce the primary airflow and the static. Um, in fact, the overall energy saving was about 45%.